In today's video, we're going to continue this series on Bible terms every believer should know. When you want to understand the gospel, the realities of the gospel, what happened to us, how we were placed in Christ, how Christ lives in us, uh, these terms are going to tremendously help you when it comes to understanding uh, the intricacies of the gospel in what took place. Uh, as we kind of begin regarding the two topics or the two uh, terms that we're going to talk about today, I want you to keep in mind the term or the word under. Under what is what you should be asking. What am I under as a believer in the new covenant? What am I under? Am I under the law or am I under grace? And I think it's important to distinguish that you cannot be under both. You're either under the law or you are under grace. So answering that question, it helps us to understand what the law is and what grace is. Now, I know I have a lot of uh, uh, stuff on this board, <clears throat> but I think it's going to be helpful once we kind of hash it all out. So the law, let's start with the law. The term the law, you're going to see that throughout the scriptures, especially with the writings of Paul. This is God's righteous standard by which he measures mankind how they stand before him. So the law was instituted and it is God's perfect standard for mankind. Initially the law would consist of the Ten Commandments. Uh, ultimately 613 laws were established for the people of Israel, God's people. And this was God's standard by which he uh, not only kept Israel, um, but by which he measured humanity and how they stood before God. And that's why they had the rituals and the traditional sacrifices and so forth, because they stood before God guilty. They needed mercy. They needed a covering for their sin and because they were under the law. Now, when you think about the law, I want you to think about something and how, if we were to be under it, what it would feel like. Now imagine for a moment this example over here is that if you had a 35 mile per hour speed limit sign and you're driving down the road and as you're driving a cop pulls behind you. Now his lights aren't on but what happens on the inside of you? You start to get a little bit tense. You start to look more specifically at how fast you're going. You're trying to drive as perfectly as you possibly can, but you do not feel a sense of freedom. You feel like, man, I can't wait for this cop to get off my tail because I'm wondering, have I done something? Immediately you have this sense of guilt, you have this sense of um, punishment, and you have a sense of fear that simply comes from the cop coming behind you while you're driving. Now imagine for a moment as you're driving, the cop gets off the exit, what happens? You feel a sense of freedom. You can maintain your driving standard, but you feel like you're no longer being judged by how you're driving. You no longer are fearful of the punishment or feeling guilty for something maybe you have done that you're ignorant of what you maybe have done. That is what it's like to live under the law. Now, before the law ever gets bashed, because in order for you to have a high understanding or a high appreciation for grace, you need a high appreciation for what the law is and the purpose that it served. Now, uh, first and foremost, the law, the Bible says, is perfect, it's holy, and it's good. It's perfect, but it cannot perfect mankind. It is holy, but it cannot produce holiness in man. It is good, but it cannot produce goodness. But it is perfect, it is holy, and it's good. And I think it's important for us to keep it in its proper place. Uh, the law reveals sin, ultimately with the goal of leading us to a Savior. You'll find that in Galatians chapter 3 and Galatians chapter 4. Um, the law produces fear. Fear of what? Fear of punishment. Fear of not measuring up. Fear of having the inability to live according to the standard that it's demanding from you. 
Um, why was it added? It was added in Galatians chapter 3. We see uh, because of transgression with the hope of revealing the, the, the heart of mankind as we talked about in the first video. And it is to lead us to the Savior. Um, another important thing is it cannot save, it cannot justify, and it cannot sanctify. So the law does not save, the law does not justify, and the law cannot sanctify. So it was added because of transgression to reveal sin so that it would lead us to a Savior. So the purpose and the, 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 the function that the law uh, serves is to lead sinners to a savior. That is the purpose and the function of the law as we know it today. Um, it is meant to reveal. I'll give you a great example. Imagine if you go up into an attic and as you're going up into the attic you have a flashlight in your pocket. It's dark when you pick your head up there. As you uh, turn on the flashlight it reveals all of the cobwebs and all of the dust. Did the flashlight produce all of that? No, it just simply revealed. That's what the law does. Or if you have a, 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 a cup of water that's been on the end table for a few days and you take a spoon and you start to stir it up, you start to see all these little particles inside. Did the spoon produce those particles? No, it just simply stirred up what was already inside and that's what the law does. So now what is grace? If we're going to understand that, okay, Romans 6.14 says you're no longer under the law. You are what? Under now a thing called grace. What is grace? Grace is God's favor. It's, it's favor that you did not earn. You do not deserve it, but it is given to you because it comes with the one who lives on the inside of you now. So when you receive Christ, all the favor that is due to Him is now directed towards you. That is called grace. It's, a, it's an empowerment um, to live this life that God has called us to live. We are empowered by the grace of God through the Holy Spirit. But ultimately grace, and I love it how some people I know say it, it's, it's a person. It's a person. It's represented in the person of Jesus Christ. He says, I came with <clears throat> grace and truth. When you see Jesus, you have a picture of grace. You have a picture of grace. Now, as we're thinking about the law, we're thinking about grace. We are called to uh, stand in this grace. Romans 5, uh, verse number 2. We are called to stand in the grace of God. You do not want to move out of the grace that you didn't deserve, but you were freely given. So grace has to be received. And grace has to be something that you embrace. Um, otherwise, the law is going to speak to you constantly. Now, when it comes to both of these, I think it's important to understand that the, the law demands and grace supplies. So what the law demanded from us, grace has supplied to us. So the law demands that we are righteous. Grace gives us the gift of righteousness. The law demands that we are perfect. Grace has supplied a perfect Savior. The law demands holiness. Grace has supplied a holy uh, or a holy Lamb of God that is living within us. And so what the law has demanded from us, grace has now supplied to us. And so when you can think about grace as a supply, just think about pipes coming down from heaven, supplying what it is uh, that we need inside of our life. It's not for selfish reasons. It's so that we can actually be empowered to live this life in Christ Jesus. So the law demanded and God's grace supplied what the law demanded. So the next question that we need to ask is, um, so what is the difference between justified and condemned? Are we justified or are we condemned? And I can tell you this is that when you uh, live under a sense of condemnation, uh, you, you cannot have intimacy with God. And so justification, as we uh, <clears throat> listened in the last video, justification is that we have been declared innocent. So the law, because I'm no longer under the law, 
Okay, I'm no longer under the law. The law no longer can condemn me because it no longer speaks to me. This is in Romans chapter 3. It says that we are no longer under the law. Therefore, the law no longer it only speaks to those who are under the law. So I am no longer condemned by the law. Now, this is very important to understand from Romans chapter 8, 1 through 1 and 31 through 32 is God is not the one who condemns. He's the one who justifies. The law is the one that condemns us. So that is why we are no longer under the law, because the law no longer speaks to those who are in Christ Jesus. Thus, I am no longer condemned. I may sin. I may struggle with sin at times. I may fall and falter, but it does not lead to condemnation because the law no longer has that right to speak into my life. I am now justified because a new voice is speaking and it's called grace. And I have a mediator named Jesus Christ who is going on my behalf. So therefore, there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I hope you followed that. I'm no longer under the law. I'm now under grace. Therefore, grace speaks to me justified. The law speaks condemned. But the law no longer has power to speak to me. Therefore, I live in a sense of justification. I am innocent. Now, I want you to see this because this is, I think, important when it comes to the scriptures. I am delivered from the law, Romans 7, 6. I am dead to the law, Galatians 2, 19. I am free from the law, Romans 8, 2. I am redeemed from the curse of the law, Galatians 3.13. And Christ is the end or the fulfillment of the law, Hebrews 10.14. So when you see that I am delivered from, I am dead to, I am free from, I am redeemed from the curse, and Christ is the end of the law, you see that the law was done with in terms of its um, speaking over those who are now in Christ Jesus. And there's two there's two, a two-word phrase that I want you to keep in mind as you look at the scriptures, and it's this, but now. But now is the demarcation line when it comes to walking in salvation and understanding who we are in Christ. You'll see it, uh, but now the righteousness of God is revealed apart from the law, Romans 3.21. Uh, you'll see, but now in Romans 6.22. And in Romans 7, 6, you'll see the phrase, but now. That is the line that is drawn. Not when you get saved, that's not the line, but now. From the end of the law, the fulfillment of the law, which Christ was, to now being in Christ, that is where we live our life. Uh, so these are two terms that I think are extremely important, the law and grace. We are to stand in the grace of God and we stand in it by faith. And we, uh, we walk in justification um, because we are now under grace, no longer under the law, Romans 6, 14. Hope that helps you understand those two terms a little bit more without adding any more confusion to it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing and subscribing. Have a great day.